this goes. Receiving content. That's good. Looking good. All right. I think we're ready to go. So, hello everyone. Welcome back to, to Workshop Wednesday, where every other week for the foreseeable future, we'll be making something. Um, geek archaeology is not just about the intellectual stuff. It's also about these things. It's also about the fact that archaeology was traditionally a very hands-on thing. And so we also research how to make stuff, how to do stuff. And so today we're going to try something a little different. Uh, we're going to try painting directly onto a t-shirt. So I've got this t-shirt here. And I'm going to do some uh, prep with it. Prep uh, with it. And then I'm going to... Um, actually print out a design, basically a stencil, and put it on the shirt, and then I'm going to paint that on the shirt. I'm going to do something a little unusual, as I mentioned. Um, so I've got these uh, various metallic paints. I think I'm going to use this metallic sterling in here. Uh, so it's a shiny acrylic paint. I'm going to mix that with fabric painting medium. Apparently you don't technically need fabric painting, painting medium. Like it will, these things will go through the wash even with uh, just straight paint. But also, this metallic paint is a little unusual, it being metallic. So I'm going to mix these up with uh, in a little bowl here, and we'll do that. Now, the first thing I want to do is cut out some cardboard that I'm going to put underneath this to keep it nice and flat for the painting. Uh, I don't want it bunching up, you know, like that while I'm painting. So fortunately, uh, I've been saving some... some cardboard here that I've gotten in, uh, from various various things. Um, so I'm just going to grab, actually I'm just going to grab that. Let me grab some uh, scissors. Scissors. And uh, I just want to just realize my uh, mailing address is on this, so I kind of want to keep that off camera. For now, let's cut down on the number of people to try to who, uh, know my physical mailing address, right? Okay. Tape on there. There we go. So this will go underneath the shirt. It's actually fairly thin cardboard. I could use something thicker, but we'll start here. Underneath. Okay. So I think that will give us a nice fold that underneath. Yeah, that's good. All right. Now I need to make a stencil. And I think I have on here somewhere uh, the image I was going to use. Uh, perhaps not. Apparently not. So one sec while I grab the. Uh, the laptop. See if I can find this image I have here somewhere. Uh, that looks about right. Yeah, so I need to do a, a little modification here. Uh, actually, what I'll do, so you can see what I'm doing. <laughs> Let's grab the video. Well, I'll get some of these logos here. I like that logo. Alright, I'm gonna put that in a oh, actually that means it is uh alright, so let me oh, gimp. And then hopefully Ah, look at that. It's already set. Um, so, I'm going to open up this logo. Um, okay. So that's what I'm working with. Oh, we've got some image sizing issues here. One second. Make this reasonably well. 
There we are. Um, so I need to actually sort of um, pull some stuff out of this. I'm going to grab that and black it out. Um, probably so I need to lasso grab just the logo. So this is the logo from Buckaroo Banzai across the eighth dimension. Um, so we're going to copy that. Oops, that's not right. Uh, discard changes. So I'm going to uh, copy that and then paste as the image. Oh, no, that's not right either. What am I doing wrong here? Um, so I'm going to select that. Uh, maybe I needed that. There we go. Okay. So that's just that. Now I'm going to select these areas, fill them in. Okay. So now we have something fairly close to a uh, what we're looking for. We're going to actually now uh, invert that. And you'll notice we still have some slight uh, lines here and there. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw a line. Where is my pencil tool? It's nice and big. So I'm just going to draw some white lines there to clean out those little bits. Now I'm going to print this on a piece of paper. Lay that piece of paper. Just, oh, there's some yellow there as well. That probably won't show up in the actual print. Oops, drop some bits there. Like that's not going to be obvious in what I'm trying to handle, but just for clarity's sake, I'm going to clean up as much of the, that yellow as I can. It's what's left over of that blue. Look for anything more. Again, I'm just going to be printing this. And I'm going to use this as my guide. So this is more for my sake to make it nice and crisp. There's a little thing up there too, yeah. Okay, so there's the Buckaroo Banzai logo. I'm going to save that. Buckaroo Bon, oops. Buckaroo Banzai logo clean. And that's gonna go, actually I think I have that under projects, yeah. Oh, high res back and forth, okay. Well, I, looks like I already made that at one point. So let me just real quick, um, high res black and white bonsai logo, eight megs. Okay, yeah, that's that. Um, that's not what I'm looking for. Cool, so I have this. So now I'm going to go ahead and print this. Um, and we're just going to print it like this and see how it comes out. And then I'll cut out that black piece um, and uh, paint through that. I just got to make sure I do this uh, straight, you know. Easy to make this crooked. Okay, what do we got? Okay, so here's the logo. That's big. That is a big logo, but I kind of like that. Uh, let's actually. So there's that nice big logo. Again, not at all unhappy with that. Um, but let's just look at it in terms of the entire shirt. It's like a medium shirt. Yeah, that's good. That's, that's a good good size on that shirt. So, let's fold stuff in a little bit so again we have a bit more uh, flexibility. Then I'm going to take my scissors and uh, just punch in. This is going to be difficult because we have these bits. Um, hmm, so how do I do that? Obviously, I can't just cut out all of this black because then what do we do with these bits? Um, do I paint underneath? I could just freehand it, but I don't really want to do that. Um, so what I'll do is I'm going to put this down and then basically tape uh, that, those pieces. And I'm going to have to basically freehand that. So, um, fair enough. I'm going to go ahead and cut this out, cut this shape, 
Nothing too crazy here. Again, this is my first time doing this. So, I don't think I am a massive expert in this yet. The whole point of this is to do this and uh, learn from it. So basically, I'm going to make this stencil, and then I will tape little spots for these uh, these white sections in the middle. I could probably cut these out and use them as guides for that. Take this. Here, get this side of it. Buckaroo Banzai is a totally gonzo movie from the 80s, but very intentionally so. You know, so people kind of roll their eyes at ridiculous 80s movies and uh, content in general. But this is uh, this is one of those movies that's meant to be ridiculous. It's meant to be very comic booky in the more uh, classic sense of that word. Where, yeah, it's epic, yeah, it's big, but it's also ridiculous in a wonderful, wonderful way. Uh, and the main character is a nuclear physicist slash jazz musician slash brain surgeon slash samurai slash race car pilot. Kind of every eight-year-old boy's dream. Um, and it kind of gives you an idea of how seriously it takes itself. Uh, also an early Jeff Goldblum role. Kind of cool. And, uh, there we go. Okay. So there we go. There's our stencil. So I'm going to tape that down. Um, probably with my painter's tape. now near the, the end of this roll, so I have an extra there. So I'm just going to tape this down. Oops. Make sure it's okay. And, oh, hold on. Let's make sure we're centered. There we go. That's better. And uh, there's not a lot of Buckaroo Banzai merch out there even though it's a fairly well-known movie for its time, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to make this shirt, because it will be utterly, utterly unique. Okay, so that's taped down. I um, wonder if I can tape underneath this bit here. I'm just going to try to... Actually, I can just do that much. roll up some of that tape and make it sort of double-sided. Good. Doing this to be like really, really carefully done. Um, so then we need to, actually, you know what? I'm just going to cut out triangles. They are basically, what's the easiest way of doing this? Uh, basically, I cut if I do a straight line, and then an interesting little project. Um, so I'm trying to replicate that triangle. Uh, so if I do that, I could actually measure. Let's do that. I'm going to lay this down, and then grab a thin sharpie, when I can actually see that. Cool. So I'm going to do a little line that's actually outside the mark. Then I'll cut that. Okay. And then that's going to go right there.
Okay, yeah, that's that's right. That looks good to me. And then uh, let's just go like that. And we need so there's the right angle. We lay this down here. It's actually nice. I was planning on being a little more freeform with this, but I like the fact that I'm getting more precise. This is good to know that it's you know, it's doable. I'm going to try not to curl that too much. It's easy to peel these off and then get this uh, this curl to the tape, which is then hard to recover from. Okay, and then I got, I'm gonna, this, I think I can just look at where the other one is. Put that in the appropriate spot. Yeah, that looks good. Uh, and then, we need to lay down some tape. And, what? Why is that? It doesn't look right. Oh no, that, that, that's right. Okay. And then we will. Um, I should have done that. Okay. Oh well. Should have done that on one side. All right. So there's, there are my cuts. I could technically cut that to get my exact shape, um, but I don't want to destroy this just yet. I'm not that confident. Mm. Getting some of that tape up. I'm just going to black the toner up. But, but basically, okay. Now we'll cut out our, our shape going inside that, those lines. I'm going to sacrifice this piece of tape. Since I've already laid it down on that piece of Paper with the toner, it's not going to stick as well. You already see those bits of toner on the back of that. That's just life. Then, ooh, you know what I can do? Just realizing that. Okay, okay. I'm going to lay this down here so I can line this up over here. We want that in the middle. What about? Yeah, cool. Then we need another one. Can I reuse this? I'm not going to reuse it because it's so stuck. But this time I'm going to be a little smarter about it. And I'll lay this tape down using this flat edge. There we go. One less cut. And one edge that I know is going to be perfectly straight. Just a little trick you learn. Okay. Come on, come on. There we go. Uh, and then, yeah, we'll pull that off. Uncurl it a bit. And then, oops. Cut there. Cut there. It's a little difficult because it's curling. I think I can make it happen. Okay. And then that's going to go in opposite. Actually, I'm just realizing I clearly made a mistake because these should line up. So we want this to be maybe here. Although, let's look. Where do we want that? Probably speaking. Yeah, we do want it like there. Okay, it's going to be a little above. Okay, there's that. And then that should be over here lined up with that one. Okay. Those look fairly lined up to me. Um, ooh, that needs to go down further. Way down. Oops. But it's 
still straight. And this goes down as well. Always worth reviewing your work. Nope, it should, go, it should be up higher. Huh, okay. Okay, and then this. Oh yeah, yeah that's, that's an easy way of fixing that. I'll go up here. Got that one wrong, but I think we're good to go now. That feels a little, a little crooked. So let's even that out. One of the things is to remember you're not, you know, you're not flawless. You can always make a mistake. You can always correct. Okay. I'm fairly happy with that. So I now have my logo all figured out. Let's move some things out of the way here. Just so I'm, I've got a little less in the way of like trash. fewer things to knock into. All right, uh, there's the scissors and there's that, so I don't need those right now. All right, so now we take some paint and we're gonna mix this up for our logo. Um, the fabric painting medium, you use two to one paint to medium. And I'm gonna just guess this. Uh, do I have, let me grab. I don't know if I'll need a glove or not, but I'll just grab one. I don't know how much paint I will need. I'm going to use a fair amount here. Especially, well, I don't know. Let's just go for it and see what happens. Okay, that seems like plenty of paint. Oh, shoot. I see I'm being messy already. that up. It's important not to like rub that down immediately. Like, there's a temptation to just kind of go into it, but then it kind of grinds the paint into the surface. Grinds it into the wood. All right, and then we will take this stuff and mix it up a bit. Probably should have mixed some of that paint. Oh, well. And again, we want two to one. I think I've already opened that cap. Let's find out. Yeah. So we need about half as much of that in here. It's very liquid. Let's find out. That seems about right. And we mix. And I've never used this up before in my life. Never tried painting and doing stuff this way, and I am comforted at the idea that folks have just used acrylic straight on shirts, and it's fine, it survives washes, but I think this will help with this particular paint. I do think I have way too much paint. Okay, we'll find out. I feel like it should be a little more integrated. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm gonna grab, yeah, let me just grab a piece of paper to put that on. Actually, do I have, should I have some scraps? Well, we will now use some scraps of the Buckaroo Bonsai for our popsicle stick. Okay, cool. I'm ready to go. I'm gonna use a nice big brush, nice big wide brush. And move some stuff out of the way. And let's just get into it, right? Uh, I'm just going to paint. Um, is that, see, that's actually sticking up a little bit, so let's go whole hog here. Just nice and 
Settle down. Settle down, settle down. Okay. Boop. Here we go. Okay. Let's do it. Grab some of this paint. We're just going to go for it. No idea how this is going to turn out. I may end up throwing away this shirt when I'm done. I might also end up um, doing something with this paint. Like I kind of want to play around with some detail somehow. Don't know quite what that would look like. I, I may be fine on the amount of paint. I'm just realizing I'm going through a lot of paint on this actually. It's definitely not a, uh, a thick, heavy kind of a, a thing, which is rather interesting. I'm not, also not sure how sharp the lines are gonna be on this. We'll find out. May end up having sort of a retro feel. That's fine. Probably should have uh, taped down this central pillar more. Might lead to some problems. But we'll see. Already got a little paint on my knuckle there. And obviously this is this is very, very simple work. Nothing nothing subtle here. Just trying to get coverage and now I'm looking back to see where I need to be a little more trying to be a little more even with the application. Not get anything a little too uh, too strong or otherwise. I'm just realizing, you know, this has this fabric, you know, medium in it. But that doesn't mean you couldn't use it for other things. I mean, that doesn't necessarily mean it won't stick to wood or whatever. Oops. Okay. Might have been better off um, like somehow sticking the fabric to the cardboard because it's fairly, uh, as you can see, it's kind of kind of lumpy now. Get a bit more down here. Try to get this even everywhere. Look for anywhere that's not as shiny. Not sure how uh, how much I could do on this, but I think that's it. I think that's a pretty good uh, spot. Thanks, Karisu. Um, so yeah, I think we've got uh, basically a logo on a shirt here, which is pretty nice. So this is just straight up craft store acrylic paint, just to be clear. Uh, it's actually from Target, so it's like a $3 a bottle. And this is a fabric painting medium from Craft Store. And uh, this is pretty cool. I think we actually have a logo here. Um, trying to decide, let's, yeah, let's just go ahead. So obviously this needs to dry. Um, do I need a second coat is the question. Maybe. Um, let me see. No, I think that's good. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and do this. And... So there's our logo. It's not very even. Um, that's a shame. So I should have taped, taped that down much more carefully. Oops, let me, let me not get paint all over the place. One sec. Need to uh, work with this. There we go. Um, do I have, where'd that go? Oh. Well. Um, obviously, I need to peel up these pieces to get the, the full thing, but you can see here I went over, here I went over, here I went over, and it's a little uneven here. So I should have taped this down very, very much more 
uh, closely, but this is not a bad little logo shirt here. Um, I'm gonna let this dry, and then, oh, I think got some issues in there. Yeah, I'll let this dry, um, and then pull this out probably you know, overnight, uh, so we can't see the, the full version when we're done, but I'm actually quite pleased with this paint. Um, it is a little shiny. Um, it definitely looks like a special application of some kind. Uh, so I'm not displeased. Now I was mentioning, I wanted to play around a little bit with, um, you know what I'll do? I'm gonna grab a small thin brush. And I'm gonna try putting my rune here. Where should I put it? Yeah. I'm just gonna paint my little signature in uh, in paint here, so to speak. Which is not easy, turns out. But it is taking the paint. This is something you could totally uh, do with a brush. If you wanted to freehand something, that's good to know. signature so to speak all right not too bad yeah I agree I like the metallic shine so there's the final so to speak image um, so next time I'll definitely tape it down more more carefully um, or maybe stretch it over the board that would make more sense uh, so stretch it over the board maybe tape it down over the board so it's nice and flat then you can uh, put your stencil down over top of that and then good to go like I'm not horrified at these things. Next time I want to make it better. But, um, um, you know, this isn't, this isn't terrible. This isn't terrible. Uh, and it's my first try. So I'm, I wasn't expecting it. I was not expecting it to be perfect. This is certainly better than I thought my first try this would be. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, not just, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to go crazy. I'm going to, I want to see what it looks like. I can't, uh, can't avoid it. Probably shouldn't be doing this with wet paint. In fact, I know I shouldn't be doing this with wet paint. But nope, nope. You know this is gonna mess it up. I know it's gonna mess it up. Um, well, wait. If I had like a small, like a toothpick, I have a toothpick. One second. <laughs> Gotta beat the devil out of it. So let me try taking a toothpick under the edge and using that to pull it away. Yeah, okay. That works. Can't resist. Can't resist picking at it. There we go. There is our shirt. That's pretty darn cool, I have to admit. Looks a little retro. Looks a little, uh, does look kind of handmade, actually. But yeah, I'd wear that. That's not too bad. I might wear this, this, uh, can't wear it this weekend. I won't be home, but whatever. Um, I wonder if I could take some black paint and come back on some of these little uh, errors. And obviously you, you tell it was paint if you came up close to it. But that might be worth doing at some point, just a touch up. Just so if you're 
Looking at it from far away, it looks a little more crisp. Worth thinking about. But yeah, this is pretty darn good. Can't can't complain too much. So yeah, that's it. Um, this is the logo for Buckaroo Banzai. Uh, the movie Buckaroo Banzai across the Eighth Dimension. Uh, uh, the attempt to make a big a media franchise in the 80s didn't pan out. But a wonderfully over-the-top 80s film about aliens and particle physics and the blues and rocket cars and just kind of everything. Um, really, really fun, fun movie. Great end credit sequence. You know, we anime fans love our end credit sequence, and this is definitely one of those uh, like epic end credit sequences. And uh, yeah, this is th that's that that shirt. So. I think definitely a, a good first try. So that's it for Workshop Wednesday for this week. Next week I'll be doing a world building video and then more workshopping the week after. I'm actually planning on doing a like a laptop bag next week, uh, sewing up a, a laptop bag. Um, so you're going to see me planning that out, seeing what goes into a laptop bag, and then assembling the pieces. Um, so even if you don't sew, this will be – and I, I don't sew – I mean, I, I have – I have done a few sewing projects in the past, but I'm, I'm not experienced in it um, in that sense. So even if, you, if you're not into, into that, this will be more of kind of an engineering product, project around figuring out, okay, what would I want in a laptop bag? What would the pockets be? Where, where would they go? How would it fold together? How would it unfold? Where would the strap be? All that kind of stuff. So it should be an interesting uh, challenge on, on that thing. So that'll be in two weeks with some world building next Wednesday. So thank you all for joining us. This was uh, nice and short and sweet, and we've made some. Pretty cool. So until next time, thanks very much and uh, make something.